Hello, so today's video is going to be on a surprisingly small and nifty little historic radiac meter. So this is a US one, I'm going to have to look at the back to remember the name of this one because it's complicated. Gamma dose rate meter radiac meter IM179U. So its actual name is the IM179U. But um, this was apparently, this particular model was built by the um, Heat Pipe Corporation of America based in New Jersey. But I think a few different companies like Victorine and all the others made these. Um, but these are like really nifty small things, and if you compare the size of it to my hand, you know, I didn't even realise it was going to be this small until I got it, I assumed it would be a lot bigger. But this was, I think, made in the 1960s odd sort of period, um, and these were designed for US Airmen, and the idea was that basically they were little um, radiation detectors. Now these aren't Geiger-Muller counters, again, a lot of people are going to call them Geiger counters, they use a very small ionisation chamber on here. And noticing how small the ionisation chamber is on this, and the fact they work, does really surprise me that more Western counters weren't made to this size, because clearly if you could get a working ionisation chamber this small, with a dose that could go from about 20 um, millironcgen all the way up to 200 ronggen, surely more should have been designed like this. Because again, the range this does, it starts at a lower range, and sort of, uh, although it ends at a sort of 300 ronggen lower than, um, say for example, the US CDV 715, um, it does basically start at a lower Ronken range, at least what's noticeable, because it has a non-linear scale, a logarithmic scale, where basically the first, basically half of the scale is from 20 milli Ronken to 2 Ronken, and then you go from 2 to 20 Ronken in a little bit, and then you go from two, uh, 20 to 200 Ronken in the last little bit. So there's only two functions of it, it's very easy to use, and obviously it tells you there what the danger of the Ronken levels means. So there's a test function, which basically just short circuits the device to check that all the electrics work, which is pretty standard of ion chambers, you know, you've just got your test button. So there's that, and then you've got your read button, that's the more interesting one. So what that does, that powers up the ionisation chamber. You hold it down for a few seconds before you're meant to take the reading, because obviously it needs to stabilise the voltage and everything. Um, and then what should happen is that the needle should basically end pretty much at the bottom of the reading range. And then, you know, once you start exposing it to radiation while holding it down, the needle should go up. So, that's all that in theory. We're going to test it in a minute and see if we can get a reading to work on it. But even if it doesn't work, it's still a nice little curiosity and I was happy that I could power it. So I'll show you what the inside of this looks like. There's two different bits to it. There's the bottom section, uh, where the batteries go. And I'll show you how I've got this powered. Because all the batteries this used to take are pretty obsolete. So, um... What I've ended up doing was finding, you know, a way of getting a very close voltage equivalent to the original batteries <coughs> and, you know, doing that. So let me get this bit open and I'll show you the bottom of it and then we'll close the bottom back up and we'll look at the top of it. But I think you'll be surprised just how small and nifty all this is because, you know, it really did surprise me looking at it. If you know most of the other Geiger counters and ionisation chambers of like the 1960s, they're a lot bulkier than this. So, there we go, so this is the bottom section, you pull this off, and there you go. There's your batteries for the uh, ionisation chamber, that single watch cell there is to power the read bit, sorry, the test bit. So that powers the filament, which is basically the needle to move that one there, these two power the ionisation chamber. So, how that works is, um, it's meant to be about 5.5, 5.6 volts, I believe, so what I've done is I've put a 3.7 volt battery there, combined with a single watch cell battery. If it wants to focus, that'd be nice. I don't think, sadly, it's going to focus. There we go. Now, uh, Hype said, and a few other people said, and I think they make a very good point, it's not necessarily the safest way of running one of these, because the bigger battery is going to technically charge the other battery, although I've technically got the um, minus side of the watch battery um, with the minus side of that battery. I don't know if that will be a problem, but as again, you're only holding the button down for something like a minute at a time at most, so I doubt that's going to be a problem. But both of these together, 3.7 plus 1.5 equal about, is it 5.2 volts? So the 5.5, 5.6 volts, it should have a battery voltage running at. Doesn't seem to be too much of a problem, seems to all work, which is good. Um, so let's put that cover back on there, and then I will show you the actual... Um, ionisation chamber bit, which is even simpler. Now, a safety note with these, these may have radium paint on the dial. I tried to measure it with a Geiger counter and couldn't really get a reading above background. 
So if there's radium paint on there, there's really a tiny amount. But it might be certain models of these had radium paint, others didn't. Maybe it's all flaked off over time and contaminated somewhere and it's no longer on this meter. I don't know, but the point is that people have said that there was radioactive paint. You know, radium paint, radium 226 base paint, like undark paint, on the dial. So... When I, when I put a torch on, my, mine did glow in the dark on the torch, but it actually seemed to glow too well to be radium, so maybe mine was just a post-radium painted one. But the bit where the radium would have been painted is, if I get back in frame, that bit there, see the two little light, white lines? That's the radium. Radium tends to go an ugly brown colour when it ages, so I reckon this is a post-radium one, actually. But anyway, let me now show you the um, bit where the ionisation chamber is. So if I open this bit up, so yeah, the ionisation chamber, weirdly, has two um, Phillips screws holding this cover on. The other bit has two flatheads. I don't know why, maybe it's to differentiate the bit you're meant to open and not open in the field. Um, but there we go, so there's that. So we pull this off. And here we go. So you've got your dial. You can see the little buttons are there. So that's your dial. And then the thing that looks like a battery behind the screen, or the monitor, whatever you want to call it, that is the ionisation chamber, the thing that looks like a battery. So, very interesting. So what I'm going to do, I'm not going to secure the top section. Um, I'm going to put it on, but I'm not going to put the screws back in, because when we test it, it might be worth trying to put a check source directly on the iron chamber. But yeah, so, it's a very, very small iron chamber. Basically, the size of the screen is the size of the iron chamber. So now let's go unlock the safe, get some samples out, and we'll see if we can get this needle to move, because I'm very interested to see if it will work. Okay, so let's see if we can get this to go. So what I've got, we'll do two little experiments. I've got a bag of radium aircraft dials there, sealed up inside the bag, so no radium paint's going to flake off. And I've got a single radium aircraft dial here, as you can see, but this one's got a glass cover on, which is nicer. So what we'll do first, put that over the top of there, and then press read. And then we want to see, does the needle stand, like stop further, you know, further right than 0 0.2? or 0.02. Now if that stopped moving, that is higher than it was before, look. Because when it stopped before, it was basically on the 0 0.2. So that could very well be um, getting a little bit of the dose from the radium going into the ionisation chamber there. Let's just um, do a little experiment. Let's take that off there, put that flat like that, and then do it. Yeah, I reckon it's getting a bit of a reading off there. Right, now let's try it on this bag of dials. So, there's more obviously dials in here on this one. So let's do read, see where it ends up. Ah, looks like it stopped about 0 0.05 as in 50 millirontgen. So that is indeed reading and working. Let's try it with the cover off, and due to inverse square law, it will be slightly further away from the dials, therefore we'll come up with a slightly lower reading. Like, let the needle settle back down, and if it stops just below the 0 0.05, that should all be working fine. I think that's stopping just slightly further right of where it was, but I don't know if that's... Let me just try moving that around on the bag slightly. But I think... Yeah, it seems to work fine, look, because, yeah that's stopping on the 0 0.05. Let's move those back out the way and do a read again. I reckon that will go lower now. Yeah, look at that. It works. And then if we bring that one in closer, we'll push these up. Yeah, it's climbing up, look. There we go. You can probably see that there, it's climbing ever so slightly up. Now isn't that fascinating? It still works. Whether or not this is even close to being the right dose coming off of there, probably not. But the point is it still works, which is pretty fantastic. So, there we are. Um, this still works despite its age. Um, I might just do a beta radiation test on it while I've got the cover off. Uh, what I want to see is with this ionisation chamber here, 
if I, it looks like it's got a bit of lead or something wrapped around it, probably to stop beta radiation interfering with it. But what I want to just see is if I get a, a strongish beta source and put it directly on there, will it register the beta source at all? So let's try that and then that will be the last part of the video. Right, I've just done some tests off camera and it didn't seem to respond to beta radiation at all. Um, but what I can do is I've got that little bit of the radium dial there. I'll wash my hands properly after, as soon as I've done this video. Um, you know, from the DP63's back screen. So, just taking that out of the safe. Let's pop that flat on there against the back of the iron chamber. Hold that down. And look at that. It's actually, um, registering more radiation than it was before, so it definitely works. We're now at about 0.1, uh, so 100 milli -ronken. Apparently, and I, I'd assume that makes sense with the amount of, um, you know, stuff directly behind the iron chamber. It's also probably much easier to flood this iron chamber artificially. And obviously I have no idea about the calibration of this because, um, you know, how old it is. But yeah, as you can see, that's definitely giving a reading now that seems to be working. So let's uh, put all this back together again. I know people are like, oh, we should wash all the iron chamber down because it's touched a check source, but... Or wash the outside case down, but yeah, let's do a read with it all in here. And yeah, pretty consistent reading again. So, um, yeah, seems to definitely work. So, there we go. The, um, I'll pack all the stuff safely back away again into the safe now. But yeah, as you can see, this old radiac meter still seems to work as much as it's probably hard to see based on the framing of it, but, you know, there we go, it, it still works, so isn't that something?